talking about, you don't know what adults are planning. And I feel like that should change because as a high schooler, I'm more aware of what's going on than my second grade brother. And I know that what my second grade brother needs is more attention in the classroom, not just more money for the school. You know, more testing, that, that only leads to failure in a class because it only seems like my brother needs to keep on testing rather than actually learning. So what are some of the things you're doing now? Um, personally, me and my family have occupied a building. Uh, we occupied Lafayette Elementary. Uh, I've attended marches. We've attended meetings after meetings after meetings. We've spoken, gave them speeches. And, you know, just a student at a, at a time, we're just getting up there and getting our voices to be heard. Uh, so what's the main message that you're trying to put out today? Um, Students are most important, and we need to fight for our own education. And you know, the belittlement of students is not right, and the school to prison pipeline is the worst thing possible. I mean, just by fighting for what they believe in. If you believe in that school closings is wrong, get involved through whoever else around you is involved with that. You know, if you believe that tip funds are not coming correctly to your school, then you should get involved with that. If you believe that your school is disciplining you too hard, or they're too strict on you, get involved like that because one little say in your school gives a bigger picture for everyone. Is there like a website or somewhere that you can go to to get involved in the studio? Um, we do have a Facebook page, the Chicago Students Union. Um, we haven't fully established our website yet, but it should be up soon. Okay, that'd be cool. Join of course, we're looking for any type of students, African American, white, lower class, upper class. If you have a voice and you want to let it be known, then the best way to do it is to get in touch with other students. Uh, my name is Malcolm London. I work today. I'm repping an organization called BYP 100. We're a national organization of black activists and organizers. Um, there's more hundreds of us across and we're organizing and building chapters across the nation working for social, economic, uh, and freedoms for all black people. Can you tell me a little bit about how it's going to carry over into what's happening today? With well, today we're talking about incarceration and schools being closed and across the nation there are, as a public attack, there's an attack on public education, which public education does. Uh, a lot of black youth are in public education, particularly in Chicago. Uh, and we're talking about incarceration, and what is very true is that there's an overrepresentation of black bodies in the prison system unjustly and unfairly. And so um, that correlates to our mission to see freedom for all people who look like me. And so uh, that's why we're here, and that's why we're organizing. Uh, what are you looking to achieve? Like, what are some of the solutions? Or, uh, I think I think there's many answers and many solutions and I think without people coming together we won't get to any of those um, I think the first step though is to recognize and to educate people on what is happening and that black people as particularly black youth are not just criminals and are not just not going to school but that there is a plan and a design to keep them incarcerated and to keep their schools closed and or owned by corporate people. What can people do to kind of get involved and take action? The first thing you can do is go to projectnia.org to just release a, a, a um, report on Illinois prisons. Uh, all the information you need to know is there. And I would also say follow BYP100 on Twitter um, just to get the information. Without the information, we're all just blind. Uh, that's the first step. And there's going to be, this is the anniversary of Freedom Summer. And this summer, BYP and many of the organizations here will be doing a lot of work, a lot of actions, a lot of tangible stuff to uh, get to the source and the root cause of the problem that is mass incarceration. Probably, probably one of the, the best ways I've heard Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I'm Mara Enya, and I am running for mayor of Chicago in the 2015 municipal elections. And our campaign website, Amara for Chicago, and we are getting ready to launch on June 2nd at 5.30 p.m. We'll be at 3219 West Morgan Street. So that's that's where we're starting, and we're going to go full speed ahead from there. I'm actually here supporting uh, a lot of colleagues, friends. Uh, I'm very big on restorative justice, and so a lot of what we talked about today was about the experiences that our young people have with the justice system. Uh, we're standing behind the juvenile detention center, where unfortunately a lot of our talent is um, locked up behind bars. Um, we also we were we met at a cold school, and 
we walked uh, 2.5 miles from that school to the center, uh, symbolically to show what happens when we close schools, we open prisons. And so I'm here because uh, restorative justice is a big part of my platform. I believe in creating accountability to the community instead of locking people up. I, I believe in investing in human capital. And I see, especially our young people, as our best asset. And so their voices were amazing, and I'm just here to support. in human capital. That means we invest in our schools. That means we are not closing schools. It means that we invest in programs for young people. It means that we have to address the issue of poverty in the communities because a lot of our young people are experiencing the impact of poverty. Uh, and so if we don't address those issues by making sure they have access to, to, access to the resources that they need, we're going to continue to see uh, our children experiencing that and being locked up and treated as criminals as opposed to treated as assets to be valued as a city. And so for me, it starts with investment. We have to invest in our neighborhoods. Uh, a lot of the neighborhoods that we, we, we were just in Lawndale, they have been excluded from the decision-making process at the top levels of city government for far too long. And so we have to invest in their schools, in attracting businesses in those communities, uh, and supporting homeowners so that they're not forced out of their homes, and making sure that they have all the resources that they need so that they can actually live here, uh, live in the city. And so I think that's that's the root of it, violence and, and uh People going to prison is a root cause. The root cause of it is because we haven't invested in the people of the city, and we haven't invested in many communities in the city. Well, first they have to feel that they have the power to to change. I think we're living in a system where people are so beaten down that they feel that there's a lack of self-efficacy about what they can do to change their community. I think we need to push back against the status quo. I think we need to advocate for whole scale change. I think we have to be willing to be uncomfortable and I think that we have to understand that we have to whatever we do it has to be a collective effort that uh, this is not something that any one group or any one individual can do on their own and so by linking up with organizations there were at least 20 organizations represented here tonight from all over the city that are doing this work so find those organizations link up with those organizations and support their efforts collectively that's the best way because there are more of us than there are of them and I think as soon as we realize that and realize the power that we have, we'll begin to, to see the transformation that we want to see in the city. They should. They should vote. <laughs> yeah, so again, the campaign launches on June 2nd. This is a movement. Uh, we're uniting all sides of the city. If you go to the website, amaraforchicago.com, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow the campaign, spread the word, tell people this is the time we cannot afford to wait. Uh, we have to act now to make sure that we are, that we have enough people that are supporting this transformative movement in Chicago. And so we've got to act now and, and hopefully everyone wakes up. Now it's time. My name is Darius Lifer and I am a youth organizer with Fly, fearless leading by the youth, based on the southeast side. And we have been advocating for juvenile justice since 2007. We have been fighting to reform this place right here since 2007. We have been fighting to shut this place down since 2010. Everything is a movement. Everything has a plan. And we have a future. But they don't believe that. They do not believe that we have a future. They believe that we deserve to be locked up. They believe that we deserve to be beat. They believe that we deserve to be harassed. Yeah. But that won't happen. No more. And these faces right here show me this. This is a crowd full of youth, a crowd full of black and brown youth who are dedicated enough to walk two and a half miles for something that they believe in. Yeah. What I call justice is 100 youth holding signs, chanting, fighting. What I call injustice is this place right behind me. Right. Right. Kids who stay in here for nonviolent crimes who wouldn't have to be in here. They 
waste 52 million dollars a year on this place right behind me. Preach, bro. When what could they do? They could shut this place down and build restorative justice hubs throughout the neighborhoods. Yeah. That's, what they do. That's what they should do, and that is what they are going to do. That's what they are gonna do if we keep on doing the work that we are doing now. If we stand here, if we keep this pressure on them, things are gonna change. Things gotta change. They have no point but to listen to us. No justice, no peace, and that's that. No justice, no peace. No justice. Stay on schedule. So I want to introduce Evan Open of Circles and Cyphers. Hi, my name is Evan Oaken. I work with the Restorative Justice Group. And we're based in the north. We had a program here. Uh, we no longer have a program here. Uh, it was too felt like tentacles were inside of our body when we were inside. It's an awful place. Uh, it, I know a lot of people who don't. They're like, yo, prison suck, but what are we gonna do instead? Restorative justice works. It works every single time. White slave owners taught money overall. That's the reason that we think it's lovely to ball. Bodies by the boatload cutting through the raw. Whips up in the closet and money in the ball. Coke up in the dashboard, bloody on the wall. Everybody know cotton fluffy in the fall. Now I see the same shit bumping in our songs. Hear it in the footsteps, running to the mall like, mm, yeah. Cop a deal on the new pair of shoes that you got to feel. Nike reported it took a lot to reel. Michael Jordan into the room where the pot gets peeled. Suited up men who invented the whip Saw paper cuts it and dented the tips of their fingers And so he was tempted to dip But figured he'd stay At least hear what the half ball meant it to say That's when they passed him pen on a plate Ink was the blood wrung from the whip Michael Jordan's front tooth sunk in his lip One of the bald men stood, clung to his dick and said First you must learn not to feel For those today who have not a meal Don't have job for no poor folk that's why we gave them pot to deal And we gave it to the rich kids too But told the cops not to care what the rich kids do Cause we do got jobs for them So long as they take what we offer them Make sure they're making us profit And put the pen in their palm and Pop it in, pop it in Come on, pop it in That shit go that smooth as Klonopin Electrons get to Klonopin in. The gut till you're hunched up vomiting Throwing up Gatorade ramen in The other synthetic shit that we bought for them It's a really pathetic the life we offer them the men chuckled then were silent till Jordan interrupted them what if your kids see the problem and choose to use what you have to stop it man oh Michael stop it man you think we haven't thought of them every weekend we give them models and a lot of gin plus some pot to spin into double white papers that they plop it in come Monday they're down to do it all again Look around you, Mike. Nothing's changing, and they're okay with that. Now we got here representing the Black Youth Project, John A. Strong. which is a national organization of activists, 18 to 35, seeking justice for all black people. So I stand here today, I have two feelings. One, I'm angry, and two, I'm empowered. I'm angry at the state of miseducation for all of our youth, and I'm empowered by the people who are standing here today. Right. So make sure that that changes right now. So when I heard about the 50 schools getting closed, my first grader, six-year-old black girl, she asked me, why is the white people town better than Chicago? So not only did she ask why is it better, but she thought that where the people live on the north side is a whole nother city. Because that's how they treat our communities. They make sure they close down all our community institutions, our schools. There's still no trauma center on the south side. Our mental institutions. Anything that's for the betterment of us, they 
make sure we tear it down. But the reason I said that I feel empowered is because we're all here today. And I know that we all have a vision. So I'm still a teacher, I'm a student, I'm an activist, and I'm a proud mother of three right. children, three black boys. <laughs> talking about environmental organisms. I said, I want you to look at your community. Instead of looking at giraffes and places that we haven't been, think about your living community and think about an adaptation that we can make to make our communities sustainable for all people. All right. And so if you think that you're smarter than a third grader, then I ask you to make an adaptation, build in with some groups like BYP 100, Project Nia, other people who are here today, and figure out how we can make these changes happen while we build power at the same time. Now we got representing and speaking to us, Ivan Rivera. Give it five of y'all. Maybe not. Next person. Ivan, are you here? Alright, cool, cool, that's cool, that's cool. We'll go along, we'll go along, we'll go along. Um, the point I like to live by is that if you're not freeing me, you're locking me up. And uh one of my good friends lives by that quote, and I want to introduce you to y'all. Give it up for ethos, y'all. My name is Ethan Beach Van Lair, and I come here today with a very heavy heart. I don't come here just with a heavy heart because we walked from one of the 50 schools that was shut down. I, I don't just have a heavy heart because while we were walking here, these police officers were following us the whole way trying to protect, protect this city. I don't come with only a heavy heart because we stand in front of this building that how, that is locking youth behind fucking bars in cages, excuse my French, in cages. I come here with a heavy heart also because I just came back from Northwestern Hospital downtown where my friend is sitting in a coma from a police officer. Sitting in a coma from a police officer. And I, I sat there in Northwestern, I looked around and I look at this building and I see all the money we flood into this building and we flood into these hospitals. And I, and I was thinking, the only time we give young people of color money is when we lock them up or when they already are shot or in, or in critical condition. Yeah. And, and thinking all this, I was thinking we can't rely on these institutions any longer to support us. We have to rely on each other. These corporate agendas will never have our agenda in heart. That's right. And we live in this stronghold in this city, in this country that has a grip on the whole world. We're in, we're in Babylon and we're walking around the dungeons. Yeah. By the time I feel like I'm in a dungeon. Like I was born in a dungeon, locked in a cage, born to be angry, chock full of rage. Ethan, why are you so angry? The three white adults asked, nah, yelled as they passed me and the only other black angry student as we sat in chairs outside of the classrooms we were just kicked out of. On handcuffs of the streets that apparently we weren't allowed on, but we were never going to leave. I was born by my mother, bred by a father who didn't know his father, who didn't know his father, who didn't know his father, right. whose father was a slave. My lineage is pockmarked with needle holes and whiplashes. A long line of black men beaten down until they almost became that three-fifths of a man bullshit they've told us since our measly existence in this country. But I was born to get locked up, to die in the cage. They made my prison cell beds in third grade when I missed too many test scores and got bad grades due to sitting outside of classrooms I was just kicked out of. On handcuffs on the streets that I was never going to leave, you see, the first arrest was scary, but the rest after that were almost routine. The handcuffs custom fit to my wrists, but I was born in a dungeon where no light can seep through. Where people tend to stare, but nobody really sees you. Yeah. I was born off the red line, in a red line community, <laughs> where dailies don't come through, and rom cut out schooling. I was born. 
on by the river With my head held on the water Floating face first in drugs, liquor And all these brothers trying to stay up by putting down daughters Self-medicating trauma-inflicted victims of this city Gang, child soldiers and sex workers masqueraded as gangbangers and bus downs, forced to sit and watch their own genocide, mass incarceration in slow motion. So of course we're burying our brains with chemicals, trying to drown out the pain in our hearts and the horror of the streets and the screaming of our mouths and the police up the block that got a vendetta on every black boy child. The perpetrators of this fabricated peace we apparently disturbed. I was born on the gutter, handcuffed on the curb. I was born in a dungeon, medicated and shackled, smothered so I couldn't shriek, shucked up my shell and left to dry. I was born in a city that never sleeps, and I've looked sleep's cousin in the eye. I was born in a dungeon, in a cage, by a father who was a slave. I was born where there's no light, near a train, on a river, filled with drugs, medications, and liquor. I was born in a hoodie. I hope I don't die in one too. I was born in a dungeon. I hope I don't die in one too. As the kids, we used to play cops and robbers. The game would always end with police shooting up the robbers. Whoever thought in time we all would be seen as the robbers. Pirates and the killers often seen as marauders. See, people fall for anything to stand for nothing. Like they scared of something. Won't voice an opinion unless it's talking down on someone. Kill a black child and you can sign some autographs. Like a black man to make sure that your income high. But hold your head up and you might become a victim. These blacks is in an ocean with hella sharks if you listen. You could probably hear the cries of them dying over fans. And then they always asking why my people hate to swim. See, I often ask myself, do I be spitting for the welfare? Spitting for my health? But be out voicing for help to the people who won't make it out. Once the pitch, but this and out. Once this the others in pursuit of them escaping out. Bang! Shot me down. Bang, bang. I hit the ground. Bang, bang. That awful sound. Bang, bang. See, it's like words are stronger than prayers, and prayers are stronger than verses, but the one way hella errors belong are the ones that's perfect, and then you try to see where you fit in the puzzle. Is it the pain, the empathy, the killings, the struggle? Is this the cycle that was prophesied by Bible disciples and Babylon? Black child seen as vicious and rifles? Crooked judges, Mr. Racist cops, and twisting our bios to everyone seen as the same and think that murder was tribal? Often pacify the cops until our cousins are robbers. Looking for logic, for fallacies, we're talking the projects. I met a brother that had told me Trayvon problems ain't his. He stated it is. His family, his wife, and his kids. Bang, bang. He shot me down. Bang, bang. I hit that ground. Bang, bang. That awful sound. Bang, bang. Everyone come in. So, yes, hi. So, I'm just, um, I'm overwhelmed by the amazing talent, the amazing beauty of our young people. And I think you saw that and you've been seeing that, right? Yes. And all of the amazing talent that's locked behind these walls talent that we're missing, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. We're truly able to transform oppression to see if it would change our circumstances. We desperately want them free. We want them out. We want them with us, and we want them to be able to be at the fullest level of uh, everything that's possible for them, right? All of us have those dreams for our people, our own people. We should have those dreams for other people's children, too. Well, my name is Sabrina Mori, and I'm with Mothers United Against Violence and Incarceration, and we're here today because we're tired of them take, closing down our schools and putting our children in prisons. Our children do not need to go to prison. They need to be in school. Thank you. Um, <laughs> like that's just is that very okay? bad. <laughs> yeah, this is not what, but his thing is that. Uh, like Tell me what, what, what got you involved. What, 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 what problems that kind of. Well, what got me involved is that you know, ever since I've been a little kid, I've been seeing you know our children. Me personally, I've been incarcerated. Some of my friends have been incarcerated, and it's not a good place to be. And instead of incarcerating our youth, we should be helping them to get an education. Yeah, and talk. not doing stuff that I, I, prison is no place for no children or no adult. Whoever doesn't already so know what's part 
The school to prison pipeline. Can you talk about that? Part of the problem is that that they go into our schools and they pick out a, a certain percentage of students that will be incarcerated by the time they're an adult. And it's not right. I'm just a little nervous right now. What to do and what, uh, what are some of the solutions? Well, some of the, the solutions are closed prisons, closed juvenile detention centers. Instead of sending our kids to prison, provide them with counseling, provide them with things that will help them, you know, have a better life instead of into a life of crime from one, from a school that's not teaching them anything to a, pri to a juvenile prison to an adult prison. Well, what can people do to get involved? People can um, come out and support. They can come to meetings and come out to marches. All right. And do you have a website that people can go to or some place for information? Um, Mothers United. We, we have our Facebook page. Is it on there? It's um, Mothers United Against Violence and Incarceration at Facebook. People wrongfully convicted. And this is my nephew. He's been wrongfully convicted as of the age of 17. It's been 18 years. And he was uh, he was a juvenile. It's a fa it's an unfair it's an unfair sentencing for a juvenile to get natural life. That Two means natural lives. That means that that person is no longer allowed to come back. He cannot be rehabilitated, which is is actually a wrong for the government to do this to a child. Do you want to keep walking with it? I don't want to keep yeah. you yeah, but I could uh, just keep walking talking. Yeah. But um, my son was wrongfully convicted and sentenced to two natural lives for a crime that he did not commit. He's been in there for since he was 17 years old. He is 34 years old now. He, May 26, he's going to be 18 years in prison. That's more than a lifetime out here for him. It's it's a year more that he's been in prison. It's not fair for the government to not look at. For one thing, it's not fair for the government to let these officers frame guys and then when they shoot somebody out in the street or they frame somebody, there's no charges being put on them. They can do no harm. They do no wrong. They let them walk away like nothing, which is really wrong because if somebody does something, they have to, they have to pay the piper. And so, what are, you, are you looking for some? Uh, what are you looking for to kind of achieve, and what's the answer to that? Here, I'm looking to achieve to get to get justice, and for this, for for this, for the people to see that we need to protect our youth, because closing the schools down for them is not actually doing any justice for them, because. They close schools down, then they open prisons up. And now the, cr the prisons are overcrowded. The prisons are overcrowded. The guys are getting beat up, jumped, and they're by the guards, which is something that's, that's still wrong. You know, even though you're in prison, you're still being, you're still being tortured and, and, and beat up, which is wrong. So right now, we want our youth to come out and take a stand and, and for the government to turn around and, and do something instead of closing schools down. Give them an education. Everybody deserves an education. The government is actually, they're working for the, the police is working for the police. Meanwhile, everybody else is getting screwed and put in jail and they get away with everything, which is not fair. Everybody should pay the same way. I mean, that's just the way I see it. <laughs> yes. What would you like to see people do to get involved and to take action in some way? We would like people to call their senators and the state representatives and let them know that we want them. We put them in office and we want them to support the unfair sentencing for juveniles. Unfair sentencing for juveniles, which is a juvenile shouldn't get 50 years in prison. They should bring that, resentence them, and give them a new, a new sentence date to come home. Because it's it's a harsh sentence. For my son, it's natural life, without without the possibility of parole. They should have a chance at living life itself, because they're kids anyway, and they're putting them in there for life. So what life are they really living? Right. Give them an opportunity to come home.
and try to live a normal life, which is gonna be hard to live a normal life since they come out, they send them out without no counseling. When they put a, a, a 17 year old in prison with a whole bunch of grown men, who knows what happens to this youth when they go in there is one thing. And the things that they have to experience in there to come out, they need counseling. The government should be supplying counseling for these guys because it's hard to deal with when you come out. There was this one guy that came out of prison, he was scared to sleep with his bedroom door unlocked because he was scared that he might react to his kids because the way he reacted inside the prison. Because you can't trust nobody inside the prison. And so that's what we would like. Um, is there a place where people could go to find out more information? You can go to Crick, C R I I C dot com, which is for unfair sentencing for juveniles. Sure, my name is Janine and I'm with the Illinois Safe Schools Alliance. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the organization does and what you're doing here today. The Illinois Safe Schools Alliance works to create safe environments for students in school, um, specifically black and brown uh, LGBTQ students. And, uh, what about today? Tell us a little bit about the action. You should interview him about the action today. Yeah, you're not, you're not. <laughs> uh, the action today was a symbolic action to kick off the week of action against incarcerating youth. It was also Malcolm X's birthday today. So we walked from a school that's been closed down in the Lawndale community to the Juvenile Temporary Detention Center to symbolize the school to prison pipeline and to show how our young people are being locked out of their schools and locked into prisons. Tell me a little bit about the problem. Like, how bad is it? And it's pretty bad. <laughs> what are some of the things that uh, you know, people are experiencing? In the some of the things that people are experiencing. So the reason why um, this work is important to the Alliance and, the, and my organization is because we know that although 5% of the population are students that are identify as queer, so uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning, or queer, um, they make up 15% of the prison systems or the criminal justice system. Um, similarly, right, 9 out of 10 young black men come into contact with the criminal justice system in this country. Um, generally, all of these identities intersect. So if you're queer identified, if you're black, and also may have like a learning disability, the likelihood that you graduate nowadays is almost none. And so you'll end up in a facility like this one, you'll end up out on the streets, you'll end up homeless. There's a huge homeless uh, crisis in the, in the youth uh, queer community today. So we're out here right now saying that this is important to us. This is We need to take the millions of dollars that are invested in this prison system and invest it back into our children, their education, right? There, there are schools in Chicago that their physical education is an online course. There are things that defy logic. And so today we're saying this needs, we need to be logical about the way that we treat our children and we need to invest in our future and the, right now, right? So that's, that's why we're here today. Tell me what people could do to get involved there's so many things. Right now there's a campaign for common sense discipline. So um, the Illinois Safe Schools Alliance and Voices of Youth in Chicago Education along with um, dozens of other organizations are working to pass statewide legislation to prevent schools from randomly and arbitrarily kicking students out. So suspensions, expulsions, detentions. Um, you can get involved with that campaign and I can give you that information as well on how to email. You can email me. My email is J-E-N I-N-E at IllinoisSafeSchools.org. Um, that's called the Campaign for Common Sense Discipline. There are the, these 30 plus organizations um, that you can work with. There are tons and tons of uh, organizations that you can work with. There's tons of campaigns to take this down. Uh, for example, uh, Fly, Fearless Leading by the Youth, have been doing this work for seven years plus, and it's an all youth led. Um, there's Decarcerate in Illinois. Tons of things that can be done. You just have to reach out and, and talk to people. And so is there a website to go to or a Facebook page for your organization? Yeah, you can look up the Illinois Safe Schools Alliance on Facebook, just as the Illinois Safe Schools Alliance. Um, we are also IllinoisSafeSchools.org. Um, and you can contact me directly uh, from there. Then my email's on the website.
It is the prisoners who have started it globally with non-violence, two words put together into a united single one, a Kingian, proactive, unified concept, a path to justice, a path to creative freedom. It has begun in the heart of darkness, in the place of isolation and torture, in the place of impunity, in, in the essential hidden place, in the blind spot, in the locked up, secret, clandestine place where denial takes place, hidden from our eyes and our heart. Guantanamo, that paramount no place of denial with a daily invisible death of those unfortunate enough to be trapped inside the fangs of an invisible system with no trial. California, where the black and brown are to be found in bigger numbers than slaves were ever found during the official time of slavery. Palestine, where children are put in dungeons by an invasive army that denies their future while it steals their land. It has begun. It has begun with the most Gandhian of techniques, hunger strike, a means of civil disobedience that has its center in our place of power, in our home amid horror, our body. This collective body that is now once again legally tamed by the global inquisition via torture and isolation. This collective prisoner body that now refuses to cooperate. This body that women know so well, a body that has been trafficked, kidnapped, commercialized and tantalized via rape and humiliation so that pimps can keep up the first business of the world, prostitution, so that Johns can fantasize they are the men they are not. A body that must become a forced receptacle for the reproduction of future compliant slaves for the state of Texas as a metaphor of forced motherhood, where women can only only cook and cheerlead and sing the praises of the global masters. It has begun. It has begun with a radical act of will to refuse to be fed one more morsel of the horror, to refuse to consume one more single poison, to refuse one more crumbling building to fall down and bury exploited workers into oblivion, to refuse one more being, one more heart, one more body to be isolated, humiliated and tortured in secret. The global awareness of the prisoners we all are has begun on all four corners of the earth. It has begun. This is a hurried, urgent, ill-constructed poem with no rhyme or rhythm but simple repetition and a heart that hungers, a belly that aches, a revolted stomach with tense limbs and an arched back that cannot take it any longer. My body has become one with the collective sick body of humankind, with the body of the exhausted wolf that tries to flee from killing helicopters and looks at them with its dying gaze, with its body riddled with bullets, with the body of planet Earth that revolts in earthquakes, heat waves and tsunamis. This poem needs to be redone, reshaped, translated, circulated, changed and added on, but it has begun. Now it must be set in motion with a global lengthy strike, a collective act of will, a core seat, a global 
stoppage, a stern refusal to go on business as usual. As usual. Now it's time it germinates into a global constituency of projects, into a thorough questioning of what it is we all want together from our different heads, from our separate thoughts, pulsing atoms of one living body with millions of ideas put together for a healthy functioning. It has begun. It has begun and it has been revealed by an avant-garde of minds, global minds, who have looked and have been put into this bottomless pit of torture and secrecy set in motion for the reproduction of a body of slavery. It has been revealed by the whistleblowers. They have given birth to a thousand lights so we may look into this secrecy, so we may clean this heart of darkness, so we may give voice and name to our blind spots, so we may put an end to the spy machine that creates our artificial misery in a planet of plenty. It has begun. We, the prisoners, have begun our way to freedom with our hungry body that feeds on our refusal. It has begun. Thank you. Thank you. So we got two more speakers and then we're going to begin the march. Thank you again, Angelina, for that. For that. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, please, y'all, show some love to Rigo from the International Socialist Organization. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm Rigo and I'm 25 years old. I grew up in the southwest of Chicago um, and I went to CPS for both elementary school and high school. And too many times the lines were blurred between a school and a prison. We had to be humiliated once in a while with surprise uh, searches when we were walking into school. And many times, uh, many of our classmates did not come back from a weekend. They were either shot or arrested. And too many times, um, I've been, I'm 25 now and I've been to more funerals or welcome back parties and I've been to uh, college graduations in the last six years. And then what's even more shameful is that people like Barack Obama go on TV and they blame us for our quote-unquote values. But what about their values? They deported two millions of our brothers, sisters, mothers, and parents. What are we supposed to do after they deport them? And what are we supposed to do when his administration is the one that's closing down all our schools and spending trillions of dollars killing our Palestinian, Afghani, and Iraqi brothers and sisters? It's his administration saying that we are not good enough for the education that they are giving their children and their, um, and whatever, um, <laughs> and whoever else. Okay, but I want to also say that, um, okay, that's pretty much all I really had to say. I just had, <laughs> and that um, this is not an accident or a byproduct. And I also, oh yeah, I wanted to make an argument to say that these chains are not only the chains that they are locking us up with. These are still the same chains that they locked up our ancestors in slavery. And not until we break those chains we actually live in a free society and it's a part of the system, they are just adapting to it in new ways. It may not be uh, Jim Crow anymore, but it's definitely the prison industrial complex and we need to tear it down and the whole system has to go with it because this system right. operates on racism. It is more profitable for them to have more prisons open, for profit systems open, they have no shame. They are locking up 14 year olds, 12 year olds and, and throwing away the key. And we need to yes. say that th these are our children children. Um, and I don't mean any disrespect to the uh, 200 uh, schoolgirls that were kidnapped in Africa, but our children are also being kidnapped and we need to save our kids. We need them to return our kids too. The only cutting in line students fear is from their district's budget. We are blaming public schools for being stumped without looking at the root causes. Since the third grade we're fed the illusion we have multiple choices. But when an unelected board closes schools in black and brown neighborhoods for the past decade, it is from a new lumber we are hanging by a thread sewn around our necks. What choices are we given then, except to become pendants of freedom too? A closed school means a door may block our entrance 
but our people were born at the exit. And we stand, and we fight, and we organize, even after tested by people who control our schools, who have never been inside them, who will never send their children there, because we have numbers too. For our schools are pillars, not to be pillaged for capital gain, for our choice will not be determined by a Scantron or by politicians who make squad cars out of school buses or developers who displace communities cloaked in an urban renewal banner or taken away by a board of education unveiling its splinters. Word. I want to remind folks, again, as we march, please stay on the sidewalks. We do not have an actual permit. I mean, you know, the people shouldn't need a permit to be on their own streets, but we don't have a permit. And so we got to stay close together when we march. Um, I want to do this chant, but I still need Miriam to uh, tell me what's happening next. But as we wait, there she is. Do you need Again, I got you. oh, you're doing this. You're doing an action piece. Yes. All right, can I do this? I, I got you. All right, this chant. I love this chant. Uh, so just repeat after me. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the law has done to me? What the law has done to me? Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no justice on the ground. Ain't no justice on the ground. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? To me. What the city's done to me? Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no freedom on the ground. Ain't no freedom on the ground. Mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What the law has done to me? What the law has done to me? Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no use in looking down. Ain't no justice on the ground. Ain't no justice on the ground. Thank you. We're gonna bring back Janine. We're gonna do this. What's up, beautiful people? We got, we got, Once again, we got one of these oh, we got a speaker. Oh, awesome. Even right. better. Cool. Uh, we got a student here from Chicago Students Organizing to Save Our Schools. Please, y'all, give it up for Nadalis. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Nidalis Burgos, a uh, student activist and a co-founder of the Chicago Students Union. Um, so what I stand for is students' education. And I know that students' education is the most important thing to us. So why aren't we the front line for our education? We know what happens in our classroom. We know what goes on and what decisions should be made. But what they've always told us was, we're only kids. So here we stand fighting for school to prison pipeline, for student education, for everything that revolves around the word students. That's what we are, that's what we're fighting for. Um, recently, Lafayette Elementary School was closed. That's my sibling's elementary school. When my brother, who's only eight years old, a second grader now, he, he got into his new elementary school and he brought a plastic toy with him to school to play for recess. That's where it was taken from him by the staff. The staff criticized him, criminalized him, pushed him down, belittled him because he brought a plastic toy to school. That was the only reason that my eyes were open to the possibilities of everything coming down to the school to prison pipeline. Because this is something we deal with every day, where us brown and black kids have to be belittled every day at our schools. Because we're just not important enough. We're always belittled. Part of today's action, we are going to symbolize being locked out very physically and literally from schools and being pushed into and locked up in prisons. So I know a group of students from Rudy have brought locks, some other people have brought locks. I brought these little tiny locks and we are going to put these locks on this fence or near this fence because this is too tiny I'm probably just gonna lay it down. <laughs> but this is to symbolize our young people being locked out of their systems of education, out of their classrooms, right? And so Miriam also brought markers and tape so for you people who know someone 
that has been locked up, that's on the inside, that's been incarcerated. You can write their names and tape it to a lock or tape it to the fence to symbolize their presence here with us today. We're honoring them and we're speaking their names. And if you'd like to say their names out loud, please feel free to come back to our circle and do so. And we will honor them with you. So, who wants to join me in the locking? Woo! Let's do it. Yeah. I'm gonna just come Thank <laughs> you.